Hi there, I'm John from cncri.com and today we'll make a custom jig for UV printing Legos. Now I'm making more and more very specialized UV printing jigs and the reason for that at my company is because we can literally make them out of any material and we can literally customize them however you want. In this case here is three quarter inch MDF. Now this isn't your typical MDF. This is the MDF that costs a lot of money because it's mostly resin and sawdust instead of just cardboard and resin and sawdust. So it's about four times the price of regular stuff you find let's say at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and it's a lot more solid and heavy as a result and I just love working with it here in the shop for our customers because it means that we get far cleaner results as you can see here. Now this is a prototype showing five different units and part of the, the process here is the customer wants to double check positioning and all these kind of things that UV printer people do. Now here's the little Lego guy and what they do is they put the blank Lego guys here they put it in a UV printer and the UV printer you know, does its work. Then they can flip it around and do the back. And of course, here we have the side, side, and you know, arms and legs that come off. So when the customer gets this, basically what this is is a prototype. It's not the actual finished one. The finished one will be a lot larger and it'll just have all of these and then all of these and then all of these. So for, it's more of a sort of production line sort of environment rather than just a jig like this here that you spend all your time playing around with. And that's what you need. If you're doing volume projects, um, if you have a small scale UV printing shop, uh, let's say you do tennis balls and you know golf balls and all that kind of stuff, then generally what we do end up doing is making a jig where um, they can put all these different things on the same jig because they don't have the volume, right? So if you need got to do like, you know, five golf balls, you know, a day and then, you know, 25 whatever, you know, uh, cigarette lighters or whatever. Um, there's no point spending all the money and getting a massive jig done if it's always half empty. But in this case here, the customer is big enough where they have enough volume where it makes sense to have a specialized jig for every part that they can handle in their shop. The size of the table for my CNC router that's cutting this very, very small jig right, is five feet by 10 feet. And on that, I'm cutting a small jig that's just inches by inches. So it's always kind of funny to see such a huge, massive machine do something so small. And you know, most of the work that I do here actually isn't across the full sheet uh, or across the full table size. And that's fine with me um, because it's those couple of jobs that you have that you actually need the full size, or if you're doing a production run, I'd say you need three or four different ways of doing something. It's nice having that extra space. It also works as a wonderful table to hold stuff on in the shop when I'm doing welding or other sort of jobs here, because I have a massive five by 10 table that actually moves uh, that's very convenient. Now the MDF you, you see here is actually the good MDF. And you can tell because if you look at the dust, it's actually just granulated dust. If it's the cheap MDF, what you'll see is a lot of, uh, it's not as dusty, it's more of like a cardboard. I, I can't describe it any other way. Um, if you have any MDF that you buy in, you know, in your shop or in your house, um, it doesn't clean, it cut this clean at all. I just wanna show you a little bit more about the process that we use to make these jigs. Remember, this is the very expensive MDF. And you know, before I started this company, I had no idea. I thought MDF was MDF, but apparently not. And this is the garbage MDF that you get at the stores got stains on it, whoever, it doesn't really matter. The purpose of this piece here is to define the parameters for this. Because the toughest thing that I get with, especially with people with UV printing uh, outfits, is that they buy, let's say, their, their golf balls from one supplier, and that's all, they, they always buy the same golf balls from that one supplier. And then what happens is, they buy their golf balls from a different supplier. Now golf is not really a good example because it's spherical, so you know you can adjust the placement from there. But something more specialized like this here, um, I wasn't sure if you know the parameters for making these little Lego guys and other Lego sort of components was standardized. What I mean by that is, you know, in North America, maybe these Lego guys are made to a specific tolerance, plus or minus whatever. And then maybe in Asia, it's a different tolerance. That's why they're cheaper. Maybe in Australia, it's a different tolerance because of safety regulations. Every country has their own sort of regulations and parameters that they have to handle with. And I'm not intimately involved with Lego. I know nothing really about the company. 
Uh, but what I do know is these guys here are this size in this, you know, North America, but it doesn't mean these guys are this size here in other countries and other areas. Because I've experienced that with suppliers who change their, their, their production lines and all that kind of stuff. And I don't mind it, you know, it's repeat business for me. Um, they happen to buy, they get us to make a whole bunch of UV printing jigs for them. And then all of a sudden they change the supplier and they find out nothing fits anymore. And that's because you want tight tolerances. So going back to this here, so you can see there's lots of testing involved here. And what I'm trying to do is get the absolute perfect fit for the little guy. So you can see here it fits pretty solid, right? But then what you want to do is have repeatability. And that's why the machine behind me is wonderful for that because it's 12,000 pounds. There's nothing, nothing moving this guy. Um, this guy could literally push a car, no problem at all. It wouldn't even sweat. And when it comes to making these little guys, um, that's actually important because well, you don't want to have these vibrations in the bit. So we, let me just grab a bit here real quick. There's a drill bit, but same idea. So basically what happens is if, you're, if you have a router that isn't very strong and stable, what will end up happening, this is an extreme example, it'll start to vibrate on you. Now for a lot of work that these machines do, you probably wouldn't even notice it, to be honest with you. Um, you can also make other adjustments so it's not that big of an issue. But when you're making little guys like this here, a movement like this by one millimeter, you're screwed because you can't get the repeatability that you need for a jig. Again, if you're just making one of these guys and one of these guys and one of these guys, you get away with it, not a problem. But if you're making a jig with 30 or 40 of these things on there, you need them to all be absolutely identical in every possible way. And that's one reason why I got this huge machine behind me because if you notice, this gantry here does not move. It's the table that moves. And because it's the table that moves, this gantry can weigh, it weighs several thousand pounds, obviously. And because of that, it's sort of a dampening. And, you know, that's what produces really nice results on big things. Uh, meaning that when I'm cutting, let's say, around an edge, you don't have that little bit of, of give that you typically have. And it helps with very, very small things like this. Because I don't have that vibration building up in the bit. It can cause oscillations and other issues. So looking for custom UV printing jigs, contact me at cncr.com. We can make them for you and ship them right to your door.